In this video, I'm going to show you how to compute a one-way analysis of variance. The example we're going to use is in the handout on using SPSS to compute a one-way ANOVA. Remember, there are four steps in testing a hypothesis. The first step is to state the researchers and null hypothesis. The second step is to compute the appropriate statistical procedure. The third step is to draw your conclusions. And the fourth step is to write up your results. The reason why we're going to use the one-way analysis of variance is because in this example, we're looking at whether a certain type of diet affects how much weight one would lose. So we randomly assigned our subjects to eat one of three different types of diets, a low carb diet, a low fat diet, or a normal diet. A normal diet is just what they would normally eat. Because we want to compare more than two groups, we need to use the one-way analysis of variance. The one-way analysis of variance allows us to compare more than two group means and doesn't limit us to the number of groups we can compare. Contrast this with an independent samples t-test that limits us to comparing only two means. The first step is to state the researchers and null hypothesis. So in this example, I'm going to hypothesize that the average amount of weight loss in the population for people in a low carb diet is not equal to the average amount of weight loss in the low fat diet and not equal to the average amount of weight loss for those on a normal diet. Of course, the null hypothesis says I'm wrong, that there's no difference in weight loss between those subjects in three different types of diet. Because I'm comparing more than two groups, I'm going to need to compute the one-way analysis of variance. In this data file, we have two variables. We have group, which tells us which group our subject was in, that is low carb diet, low fat diet, or normal diet. And then our second variable represents the number of pounds the subject lost after three months. Here's the variable view of the data file. If we go back to data view, we can see we have the data for 34 subjects. To run the one-way analysis of variance, we'll go to Analyze, we'll choose Compare Means, and then select One-Way Analysis of Variance. That will bring up the One-Way Analysis of Variance dialog box. You can see all of the variables in our data file are along the left-hand side. We need to specify for SPSS which of the two variables is our independent variable. The independent variable in the one-way analysis of variance dialog box is called the factor. So our independent variable in this example is type of diet. We'll highlight that and move that over to the factors box. And then we'll select the dependent variable we're interested in and move that over to the dependent list. SPSS calls the dependent variable in a one-way ANOVA the dependent list. Then we'll click on options to get our sample mean and sample standard deviation for each of the three groups. We can do that simply by clicking on descriptive, which will give us the descriptive statistics that includes the mean and the standard deviation for each group. Then we'll click on continue. And of course, if we have statistical significance, we'll want to see which groups differ from which groups. So we'll choose a post hoc test. And in this case, we're going to use a conservative post hoc test called the bond Froni adjustment, which simply takes our normal alpha level and divides it by the number of pairwise comparisons that we're going to do. And in this case, we're going to have three pairwise comparisons. So we'll check on the bond Froni adjustment or what's called the Bonfroni procedure and click on continue. So we've specified our dependent variable, our independent variable, we've asked for our descriptive statistics as well as our post hoc test. Now we'll click on OK and it will run both the one-way analysis of variance as well as the Bonfroni post hoc test. To interpret the output from a one-way analysis variance, we'll begin by looking at our descriptive statistics. We can see that we have 12 individuals that were on the low-carb diet, 
11 that were on the low fat diet and 11 that were on the normal diet. The average number of pounds of weight loss after three months for the, those in the low carb diet was four pounds. For the low fat diet was 4.73 pounds. And those that were just on a normal diet lost 6.45 pounds. And of course we can see the standard deviation, the standard error, as well as the minimum and maximum scores for each group. Again, this box here gives us our descriptive statistics. The second thing we want to look at is our ANOVA summary table. The ANOVA summary table is going to show us the between group effect as well as the within group effect. What we want to write down is three main things. The first thing we want to write down is our F calculated score, which in this case is going to be 3.52. We round up to two significant digits according to the American Psychological Association's publication manual. The second thing we want to write down is the degrees of freedom in the numerator or the between groups degrees of freedom which is 2 as well as the degrees of freedom in the denominator or the within group degrees of freedom which is 31. The last thing we want to write down is the exact probability that the effect is due to random variation which is located in this box underneath SIG dot. In this case it's 0 .04. This is also known as the exact probability that the effect is due to random variation. So we'll write down our F calculated of 3.52, our degrees of freedom, 2 and 31, as well as our exact significance level, which is 0 0.04. Because we have a statistically significant result, we know one of those diets makes you lose more or less weight than one or more of those other diets but we don't know which diet makes you lose more weight. We just know that there is a significant difference somewhere between those three diets. In order to find out where the differences actually are, we need to compute some type of post hoc test. We can use the Bonferroni post hoc test, or what's called the Bonferroni adjustment, to figure out which groups are different from which groups. Notice in the multiple comparison, it's going to do every pairwise comparison. So it's going to do low carb versus low fat, low carb versus normal. You also see the other iteration of the low carb, low fat. In this case, it's low, far, low fat, low carb, which gives us the same values. And the last pairwise comparison is low fat versus normal. So the first pairwise comparison is low carb versus low fat. The second one is low carb versus normal. And then the last one is low fat versus normal. You can see here, this is just giving us the same information, just another iteration of that same pairwise comparison. You can see by looking at the significance levels that the only one that is statistically significant, that is the only one that's less than an alpha of 0 0.05, is the low carb versus normal group. There's no difference between the low fat and the low carb group. And there's no difference between the low fat and the normal group neither of these are statistically significant. The only effect is the difference between the low carb and the normal group. And we can see there that the probability is 0 0.04. Now we can go and interpret the means because we know that the difference between the means is simply not due to random variation. That is in the population there is a statistically significant difference. And we can see the nature of that difference is that people that were on the normal diet lost more weight than people that were on the low carb diet. However, according to both our ANOVA as well as our post hoc test, there's no difference between the people that were on the low carb diet and the low fat diet, or the low carb and the low fat. Likewise, there's no difference between those people that were on the low fat diet and the normal diet. In other words, the only effect is between those people who are on the low carb and the normal diet and you can see people that were in the normal diet lost more weight than people in the low carb diet. Now that we've computed the one way analysis variance in SPSS, let's move on to step number three, which is draw our conclusions. What we want to do is write down our values from our ANOVA summary table. And you recall that we had an F score of 3.52 with two degrees of freedom in the numerator and 31 degrees of freedom in the denominator. 
and the exact probability that the effect was due to random variation was 0.04 or 4%. The next step is to physically draw our conclusions. So we're going to draw what looks like a positively skewed distribution that represents the probability from one or 100% chance that the effect is due to random variation to a 0% chance that the effect is due to random variation. Of course, we need to mark off our rejection region and we're gonna use an alpha of 0.05. So you can see in this graph, this part of the graph represents the rejection region or the lowest 5% in that distribution. And this represents the upper 95% of the distribution. This area has a name and we call it the rejection region. So we have our probability graph that ranges from 100% probability that the effect is due to random variation to a 0% chance and we've marked off our rejection region with an alpha of 0.05. You can see our obtained p-value or significance level is 0.04 and is less than 0.05. When our obtained p-value is less than 0.05, we're going to reject the null hypothesis in favor of our hypothesis. If our p-value was greater than 0.05, let's say 0 0.08, 0 0.10, 0 0.23, or 0.65, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis, indicating that there's no difference in any of the means. In this case, we can see that we have a statistically significant effect. That is, one of these diets makes you lose more weight than one or more of those diets. Because we don't know which diet is different than which other diet, we needed to do the post hoc tests specifically do the Bonferroni post hoc test to find out which group is different from which group. Let's move on to step four. In step four we're going to write up our results. You can see here I've written up our results for this example not only for the ANOVA but also for the Bonferroni post hoc test procedure. So I might write something like this. A one-way analysis of variance was computed to determine if the type of diet affected weight loss after three months. Subjects were randomly assigned to eat either a low-carb diet, low-fat diet, or normal diet. A statistically significant effect was found with an F-score of 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 31 degrees of freedom in the denominator was equal to 3.52, and the probability of the effect was due to random variation was 4%. A Bonferroni post hoc test revealed that those subjects who ate a normal diet had more weight loss, an average of 6.45 pounds, than those who were on a low carb diet, an average of 4.00 pounds. No differences in weight loss were found for those who ate a low fat diet versus a low carb diet or a normal diet. Eating a normal diet makes one more likely to lose weight than a low fat or a low carb diet. Remember, there are four steps in testing a hypothesis, and we'll use a one-way analysis of variance when we want to compare more than two group means. In the data file, you need to have two variables. One variable, your independent variable, that's a grouping variable, and a second dependent variable that's measured at the ratio or interval level. Make sure that you write up your results. As always, if you have any questions, stop by during office hours. Have a great day.